In this example, I would like to revisit the source-free RL circuit. Um, we've looked at this circuit before and we used the uh, full-blown differential equation approach to determining um, the current, or excuse me, the voltage that is developed across uh, the inductor here, uh, L1, after this switch changes position from the current position uh, and then becomes connected to this, this 1 ohm resistor and becomes disconnected from the 12 volt supply. Uh, what I'd like to do now is revisit this and we're going to use the principles of the general uh, first order system model um, for a step input to uh, uh, hopefully more efficiently describe uh, the behavior of the circuit. Um, just as a review, uh, the general first order model tells us that if we know, if we're looking for a particular um, solution for a uh, differential equation or for a step input to a first order system, we know that the function of time that's going to describe that behavior is going to be uh, known if we can specify the initial condition, the final or steady state value, and the time constant of the system. And the solution to that step input or that step change uh, model is given by this equation, x0 minus x uh, infinity, where x0 represents your initial condition, x infinity represents the final steady state value of the system, multiplied by e to the negative t over tau, where tau is our time constant, and again we'll add the final or steady state value. Um, so let's take a look at uh, this circuit again where the switch is going to change position. And after the switch changes position, the circuit that we are going to be interested in modeling the output voltage uh, of will look like this. We'll have a single resistor, R2, along with our inductor, L1. And we're interested in the output voltage as a function of time that's developed across that inductor and resistor. Okay, so uh, now without going through the differential equation solution, uh, the first thing that we need to do is we need to determine the time constant. We recognize that since there's a single um, energy storage element, this inductor in here, that uh, this must be a first order system. And we need to, first of all, we do need to develop the differential equation model to determine what the time constant is. I'm going to, since we're looking for a voltage, I'm going to use the node voltage method, and I'm going to consider this to be the uh, low side, uh, or the zero voltage reference node, and up here is going to be the uh, voltage uh, node that we are interested in uh, developing our model for, because this will represent the output voltage with respect to the uh, low side, uh, or the signal ground that I've established right here. Okay, in the node voltage method I have two current paths, so I'm going to um, write Kirchhoff's current law for those two current paths. I can have a current through resistor 2, and I can have a current through inductor 1. Kirchhoff's current law states that all of those need to sum to zero. And now I'm going to substitute in my current to voltage relationships for the resistor and the inductor. The current to voltage relationship for the resistor is given by our Ohm's law relation, so that tells us that V out as a function of time uh, minus zero, because that's the potential difference, across that resistor divided by R2 is going to be the current through resistor R2. For the inductor, we have an integral relationship and the integral relationship for current to voltage tells us that um, the current is proportional to 1 over the inductance multiplied by the integral from time 0 to time t of the output voltage integrated over time plus we have to include the initial current through the inductor of course, this is not a differential equation. I want to get this in differential, equa uh, differential equation form, and I want to get rid of this integral. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the derivative with respect to time of this entire thing. Okay, when I do that, the derivative of, of the output voltage with respect to time is going to be the derivative of the output voltage with respect to time, and I'm still going to retain this uh, constant term right here, R2. So that will be 1 over R2 times 
dv out dt. All right, now I'm going to take the derivative of this integral term. Since the derivative is taken with respect to time, uh, when I take the derivative of this integra integrated uh, v out variable, I'm just going to be left with the integrand, or v out, and of course we still have to retain the constant out in front. So it will be 1 over L2, and the integrand is v out. And this term right here, the constant uh, that represents the initial current through the inductor, has to be 0 because it's a constant value, and when I take the derivative of the constant, that goes to 0. So I'm left with my differential equation model, which looks like this. Now I'm going to get that into standard form. The standard form for a first order, order model tells me that I want to get everything in front of the first order derivative term, all of the constants in front of the, that first order derivative term. So to do that, I'll multiply through by L2, and I'll wind up with L2 over R, or sorry, L1. Sorry, these should all be L1s. L1 divided by R2 times the first derivative of the output voltage with respect to time plus V out is equal to zero. So this is a first order differential equation and this is in standard form. The standard form, recall, is our time constant multiplied by the derivative of the variable that we're interested in plus no constant times the variable of interest is equal to zero or the forcing function. All right, so since we have this in standard form, we see that the time constant in this case um, for this situation is going to be tau is equal to L1 over R2. Okay, so we have one of the pieces of information that we know, that we need to know for our general solution. And uh, I want you to get into the habit of uh, making sure you can develop the differential equation because um, we are familiar with a resistor and an inductor that the time constant, if you have a single resistor and a single inductor, is always going to be L over R. Uh, but in other cases, we may have multiple uh, resistor and inductor combinations, and the time constant is not necessarily going to be L over R in all of the cases. But you can confirm the time constant by establishing the differential equation model. Now the nice thing about this general solution up here is that we don't have to actually solve this differential equation, although it's fairly straightforward to do so. Uh, but uh, in more complicated cases, if we know the time constant, we may not need to actually do the full differential equation solution. Alright, so in addition to the time constant, I need to know my initial condition for the variable of interest, which is the voltage, and I need to know my um, steady state voltage condition. Let's start off with the steady state because that one is going to be uh, the easiest one to do for the source-free system. So in this one, we're looking for the output voltage across this inductor or resistor as time approaches infinity. In this case, since there's no, um, no supply in the system, since we're not providing energy to the system, all of the energy in the system has to be dissipated. So eventually, over time, the potential, all of the current uh, that was being stored by the inductor is going to have to be dissipated uh, by a power loss across that resistor. So eventually, um, the amount of current that's flowing through the system is going to have to go to zero as the potential across the inductor and resistor equilibrate with each other. So that one's a fairly straightforward one. Eventually, the voltage output is going to go to zero because all of the energy in the system has to dissipate. The next thing that we need to do is we need to figure out what the initial current in the system is going to be. And the initial, uh, excuse me, the initial voltage uh, when that switch first changes position. And the way that we're going to do that is by looking at um, the initial current in the system. Okay, so before time is equal to zero, I'm going to come over here and do that to find our initial condition. Before time equals zero, or before that switch changes its position, the circuit that we have looks like this. A 12 ohm in series with the inductor. Okay. Um, at this point in time, since uh, we're going to assume that this 12 volt source has been operating for a long period of time, the inductor has its magnetic field fully established and we know from the properties of inductors that at this point in time 
if the magnetic field is fully established, the inductor acts like a wire. All right, so that means that there's no potential difference or no potential drop across this inductor, and all of the current that's being supplied by the 12 volt supply has to go through this uh, this inductive element um, that's now acting like a wire. So in this case, the uh, 12 volt um, is going to be uh, passed through this 12 ohm resistor, which gives us a current, an initial current before the switch closes, of one amp. Okay. Immediately after the switch closes, oops, this thing goes away, we're going to have our 1 ohm resistor in parallel with the inductor. We know that 1 amp of current at this time, right at the instant that that switch changes position from R1 to R2, we know that 1 amp of current has to be flowing through this uh, inductor. We also know that the potential across an inductor can change instantaneously, but the current through an inductor cannot change instantaneously. So since the current can't um, change instantly, we know at this time we have to still have one amp flowing through this uh, supply. Oh, excuse me, flowing through this uh, inductor. Well, according to Kirchhoff's current law, though, we cannot lose uh, current uh, from this top node right here. Uh, that means there must be some input current to balance that 1 amp loss through the inductor. So that means we have to have 1 amp of current also flowing through that resistor in this direction. Since current is flowing from this direction, that means that the high side of the current is going to be here and the low side, or excuse me, the high side of the potential that's developed is going to be here and the low side is going to be here. So if we measure the potential across that resistor, which is going to be the same as the potential across the inductor since they're in parallel with each other, it's going to result in a negative voltage with respect to what we called our signal ground right here. All right, so our V out at the instant that we flip that switch is going to be the current through the resistor multiplied by the resistive element and we have to take our sign of that current flow into account. So that gives us the fact that at uh, time is equal to zero just after we close that switch, the voltage output is going to have to be that 1 amp of current times the resistor R2. All right, so 1 amp times 1 ohm uh, is going to give us 1 volt, and that's going to be in the negative direction. All right, so we're going to have negative 1 volt of uh, output initially. Okay, so with all of that in hand, we can now use our general form to write the final solution for our step input that tells us how the output voltage across this inductor and resistor is going to change with time. So V out as a function of time is going to be x naught minus x infinity or our um, initial voltage minus the uh, steady state voltage, which is zero, so that will be negative one minus zero times e to the negative t over tau, so that will be t times r2 over l1, plus our final or steady state value, which is zero. So that tells us that our expression that's going to describe the output voltage as a function of time across this uh, inductor and resistor is going to be given by negative 1 e to the negative t times r2 over l1. And if we go back to our uh, original solution here when we use the differential equation model we came up with the same value, uh, Vn was 12, divided by uh, R1, which was 12, so that gives us negative 1 times R2, which is 1, so that tells us our initial condition should be negative 1 volt, and if we look at the solution, uh, this is exactly what we just came up with, except we actually plugged in the values of R1 and R2 here, and this graph uh, shows the response for different values of the inductor. So the smaller the inductor value, the smaller the time constant, and we get a much faster response or faster approach to steady state. The value is going to start out at negative 1 volts, 
one volt and it's going to approach our steady state value of zero. So this is a different, uh, a slightly different method uh, using the fact that uh, we know the general solution uh, for the step input behavior of first order systems.